Well, friends, uh, grace to you and peace this morning from uh, God, our Father, our Lord, our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, each time I read these words of Jesus from our text today, I, I'm made aware again of the, um, folks, of the fulfilling uh, yet at times costly and uh, radical nature of the faith and the life into which Jesus calls us. It's challenging, but it is worth every effort we make at it. Folks, let our lives, let your life, let my life be an affirmation of Jesus. You know, the church and its people struggle at times with um, with their values becoming enmeshed with um, with the values with the uh, that that mark the secular world around us, where wealth and power and prestige just become the values that that we think are all important. The me first kind of uh, mentality, but Jesus. I, let's be honest, had a different slant on things. And he calls us to, to help him in ministering to uh, and reaching out to the world. And the world isn't just out there. The world is in our homes. It's in uh, our uh, communities. You and I, we, we, we are not ashamed of Jesus. Jesus nor are we embarrassed to be called a follower of his. Why aren't we? Do you and I not feel honored? Don't we feel privileged to serve in his name? I'm glad to be a Christian. Folks, we just want to figure out what what it all means. And then, and then do the best that we can. I mean, isn't that the struggle? Isn't that the desire of our hearts? It's my desire. I know it's yours. Please know, following Jesus is not about perfection. There are no perfect Christians. It's about the desire, though. I mean, let's look at our hearts. It's, it's about the desire deep in our hearts to be obedient to his teachings to copy his example and that to that one day that we might hear uh, the king of kings and the lord of lords say to us well done good and faithful steward i mean i you and i we've come here this morning jesus deserves He deserves our attention because of who he is and what he has done on our behalf. It's awesome. It's amazing. And we are grateful. I pray that's your heart. I pray that's that's always our heart. Thank you, Jesus. We might not always do it right. But as long as we keep listening, as long as we keep learning and and are desiring to live out his words and his promises, folks, he's going to make a difference. He's going to make a difference in our lives as well as working through us to make a difference outside our lives. What does it mean? I mean, this is, a, this is one of those texts that, what does it mean to forsake all and to take up the cross to follow Jesus? In a very practical sense, folks, I learned a long time ago that passionate commitment, that passionate faith, that sacrifice, 
a willingness to sacrifice, a willingness to act, an act of the will, that all those things, those are important ingredients in making something work well. Just in the whole of life, it's true. Whether it's becoming proficient in playing the violin, if you're going to do that, you, you've got to, You've got to have a passionate commitment. There's, there's a sense of sacrifice that's going to go with that. If you want to do it well, it's true when you're seeking to develop a committed relationship. When you're developing one's personal and or professional life and skills. They don't just happen. They, there is a mindset. And it's also true with our walk with Jesus. A passionate commitment. A willingness to sacrifice. An act of the will. And Lent is just a marvelous time for us as we are headed toward Calvary, as we're headed toward Good Friday. Lord, I want to I walk in your footsteps. So let's begin here. You know, folks, Jesus had a, had a definite mission. I mean, he knew what he was about. He spelled it out at the beginning of his ministry. He says, my ministry is to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I mean, that has both spiritual connotations, it has physical, emotional connotations to it. He he cared about the whole person. He said, I've come not to be served, but to serve. We misrepresent the gospel. We misrepresent the gospel when we limit Jesus' mission to getting people to heaven. Now, he did that, of course. He did that. He gave his life in order that that might happen, and the resurrection confirms that. I mean, but friends, his mission also had to do with getting heaven into people not just getting people into heaven but getting heaven into people into us to get into us god's love to get into us concern for god's world into our hearts Now, I suspect that that many modern people today have never thought about why why there are so many hospitals with religious names, so many schools with, with religious origins. They have no idea that so very many of the healing compassionate ministries and the social reforms that that have swept the uh, Western world over the past 2,000 years have been led by people who, above all, were committed to Christ. We don't hear that these days. We don't hear it these days. But folks, let that spirit continue. That's what the church is about let's you and i do something about christ's reputation in this world huh let's do something about christ's reputation in the world to to continue demonstrating and inviting a welcoming a hospitality a passion for addressing the world's hurts and helping the needy and the outcast Oh, Master, let me walk with thee. I mean, these are the things that 
that motivated, that drove our Lord. And I want to be like you, Jesus. That's what we're here for this morning, just to kind of, in a world in which we live, just to, to kind of get it straight again in our minds. Now, and I recognize that our Christian worship this morning is not an end in itself, but rather it is a means to preparing for serving the world outside for the next 167 hours of the week. That's what this hour together is helping us toward to walk in Christ's footsteps. What would you have me do? What would you have me be, Lord? And we honestly ask it. We, and our Lord isn't sitting there with fingers pointing, and, and, and he's just saying, Let, if you're willing to listen, I'm willing to lay it out for you. This is what we are about. Again, we want our lives to be an affirmation of Jesus. And so we have come. Summer waters, I, I used this illustration a number of years back, but it's just worth repeating. This little girl uh, was 11 years old when she wrote this very affirming poem. And see where, how you see yourself in this, okay? She said, she wrote, I saw Jesus last week. He was wearing blue jeans and an old shirt. He was up at the church building. He, he was alone and, and, and working uh, hard. For just a minute, he looked, like, he looked like one of our members. But it was Jesus. I could tell by his smile. I saw Jesus last Sunday. He was teaching a Bible class. He, he didn't talk real loud or use long words but but you could tell he believed what he said for just a minute he looked like my bible teacher my sunday school teacher but you know it was jesus i could tell by his loving voice i saw jesus yesterday he was at the hospital visiting a friend who was sick. They prayed uh, together uh, quietly. For just a minute, he looked like Sister Jones. But it was Jesus. I could tell by the tears in her eyes. I saw Jesus this morning. He was in my kitchen making my breakfast and fixing me a special lunch. For just a minute, that person looked a lot like my mom. <laughs> but, but it was Jesus. Because I could feel the love from his heart. I see Jesus everywhere taking food to the sick, welcoming others to his home, being friendly to a newcomer. And for just a minute, I think he or she is someone I know, but, but it's always Jesus. I can tell by the way they serve. I can tell by the way they serve. Folks, I'm glad you and I were in worship today. I hope you know that the acid test of our commitment to Christ is, is not how well we sing the hymns. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not how well you listen to, uh, to the sermon <laughs> or how diligently and prayerfully I prepared it. It's not the acid test of our faith, of our commitment to Christ. Important as all of that is to the glory of God. The acid test happens when we walk out that, these doors. There are people in our society, there are people in our community 
who think we are a sham. Who think that we are a sham. And I'll tell you, there is only one way for Christians to prove them wrong. And that is by serving and by loving and helping like Jesus and then genuinely inviting and welcoming them to come hear the story, to join this faith family and be embraced as a valued partner in the gospel. It has nothing to do with judgment. It has nothing to do with condemnation. You want to prove them wrong? It's by our serving and our caring. To have someone say to you, you've got something that I don't have, what is it? In an angry world. This is our calling. This is what Jesus calls us to. Taking up a cross taking up a cross to insist on serving, not just to be served, to love kindness, to do justice, and to walk humbly with our God. Folks, that's Jesus' way. That's Jesus' way. And I've become convinced of this, that following Jesus is the path to a fulfilling life. So, our lives, your life, my life, an affirmation of Jesus. Say that with me. Our lives, an affirmation of Jesus. Say it with me. Our lives, an affirmation of Jesus. That's a pretty cool goal to set before our eyes, folks. It's enriching and empowering. Amen.